Call the city council meeting to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilperson Felder. Here. Whitman. Here. Michelangeli. Here. Bining. Excused. Me. Here. Lamore. Here. Mayor Clark. Here. I'd ask we all please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. We have faith and hope in each other and our democratic form of government. We ask for your guidance in the decisions that are made here. We ask you to work for the welfare of this community and all of its residents. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Clerk, first item, please. The first item would be any amendments to the agenda. Council, any amendments to the agenda? I don't believe so. Okay, next item, please. Next item, citizen comments not related to an agenda item. Thank you. At this time, if there's any comments from those present here this evening that wish to make uh, comments to council, that would be appropriate. We also have the opportunity at the close of the meeting also. Any comments from those present here this evening? Yes, sir. Participating in our first annual pancake breakfast with Santa Claus, um, we were able to raise enough money to provide a meal and some presents for two families. And we'd just like to thank everybody for coming out and helping out with that. Great. Thank you, and thank you for coming to let us know. Other comments from those present here this evening? Seeing none, clerk, next item, please. Is item 2255 recognition of donation from the Lazy Boy Foundation? Thank you, Mr. Cochran. I believe uh, you have some uh, preliminary comments for us. Honorable Mayor, City Council, Mark Cochran, Assistant City Manager. Uh, last year, we received a generous donation at the end of 2017 of $15,000 from the Lazy Boy Foundation, uh, which allowed us to renovate the third floor conference room. I know we've all had a chance to see it, and that work was done in the first quarter of 2017. I think it's made a huge improvement. I think most of the staff would agree. Um, not only did we change the color of the, the, the walls with the paint, but also the smart board has made uh, the work of city staff and also city council uh, much more efficient and allowed us to, uh, to do a lot more work in that room. I think it's one of the most used rooms in city hall, uh, even though this room was under construction at the time as well. So. I think a few examples of some successful meetings that we've had was, of course, the uh, City Council goal and objective setting session that we had in January. I know the zoning uh, uh, subcommittee has made great use of it and being able to actually do a tour of the city using the, uh, the smart board and also the, the reception that we held for the uh, Japanese sister city in that room previously earlier this year as well. Um, made for much more efficient and productive meetings with uh, developers in town and also the Student Advisory Council uses the room uh, and use the technology a lot more. So um, tonight we just wanted to, even though it's a year later, we were waiting for City Council Chambers, uh, the renovation here to complete before we invited our friends from the foundation to publicly express our appreciation for their donation. So tonight we've got um, three representatives from Lazy Boy and the Foundation, Sue Vanisacker, Beth Lambrix, and Chris Knebush here um, so that we can uh, show them appreciation for their uh, generous donation in the, the third floor renovations. We had a moment to go up and take a look at it and show them the outcome. So, Mayor, I know you've yes. got a presentation if you'd like. Sure, I ask that uh, uh, Susan, Beth, and Chris join me at the podium, please. I'll just be brief. I, I want to uh, thank Lazy Boy for the uh, a partnership and a, a long-term partnership, not just uh, here with uh, the council and uh, the council's appreciation for the uh, partnership on that. I, I just Mark went through a whole list of items that have been used up in the new uh, improved conference room, the technology, of course, 
It just, um, again, today there was a, a group that was in and we were able to use that. The Leadership Monroe program last week that uh, Attorney Matt Buds and I uh, held for the, the government day and to utilize that room with the smart board uh, to help the scenario and actually some educational opportunities. So it's getting well used from students from the student advisory right on through the adults and leadership and the functions we have. So at this time, it's just a small uh, presentation, but we will be um, working toward a more permanent uh, messaging uh, of the new Lazy Boy conference room on the, on the third floor here at City Hall. So I'd like to present this at this time which is the Lazy Boy Conference Room is the uh, name, but we're going to have a nice uh, a sign put up as we get uh, continue to refurbish. And I only want to give you uh, my and the council's thanks for all that Lazy Boy does, not only for the city, but also in our community. So thank, thank you very you much. So much thank you thank you. Mm -hmm. Chris, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Maybe that's one. Well, I think um, they always have me speak. Um, <laughs> um, we're honored with this. Um, you know, we have so many wonderful partnerships in the city, in the county, and throughout the state. And um, it's easy to work with um, wonderful people like all of you. So thank you very much um, for this, and um, we're happy to be here. Well, thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Who wants to take it this way? You want me to stand this way and take it? I don't care. Here, I'll stand <laughs> here. Right this here. Way? We'll stand right here. Okay. Let me do this. Okay. Thank you so you. much. Clerk, next item, please. Next item is item 2264, ALCC funding agreement update. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pass, too? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this item uh, goes back. Uh, this item goes back to uh, uh, this last June when the city entered into a uh, uh, funding agreement with the ALCC uh, uh, nonprofit board going through a series of items uh, 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 in, from uh, corporate uh, or board. Uh, uh, standpoint, uh, things that to, to be accomplished uh, tonight was dedicated uh, that we would, they would get a report back uh, where they are with uh, uh, with those items contained in the funding report because they were going to trigger uh, uh, funding for the, the the rest of the year. If you recall, uh, the board uh, or the council allocated uh, seventy thousand dollars for the first uh, six years, and then based on tonight, uh, decide whether to proceed forward with that uh, at this point. So. I'm going to let uh, Mr. Felix Hill, the uh, executive director with the ALCC, uh, do a brief presentation where there are, and then uh, allow for some additional discussion from our from the staff end of it. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you all for having us uh, again on this evening. Uh, run through some of the things that we have accomplished um, per the funding agreement. Um, since my arriving here in Monroe about three or uh, four months ago, um, based on the funding agreement, um, uh, right now uh, our audit report is complete. Um, that has been completed. Um, the hours of operation um, have been established. I think the last time I was here, I uh, gave you all hours from Monday through Saturday. Um, a minimum staffing right now, I have a staff of uh, seven people, including myself. Um, of which we've done training for in the past three months uh, for CPR, bloodborne pathogens, um, and feeding uh, program training. Um, I've also uh, had volunteer training in which we've vested um, into uh, our program, or I'm sorry, our senior program uh, manager and our um, volunteer coordinator and community outreach person um, in Flint, Michigan recently. Uh, we also have done some funding training uh, with my program director, uh, Ms. Latia Reed. Um, our vehicle usage policy has been established. Um, we do have a usage log. I'm in the process of purchasing a um, GPS um, device 
in order to track where the van is at all times. Um, and the van is only be used and operated by AOCC staff, you know, on staff. Um, our ethics policy um, has been completed and it's included in our employee manual. Um, developed, uh, we have developed a list of uh, prospective um, partners and uh, sponsorships. Uh, local and regional partners have been initiated, um, more so by myself. Um, established list of local and regional donors, um, which I've certainly had the help of my staff in doing that, um, and which we've already benefited from tremendously through all of our community events to this point over the past couple of months. Um, we also, we completed today, um, starting to send out Christmas cards as thank yous to all of our donors and partners um, that have vested over the past couple of months. Um, our employee manual has been completed. Um, <coughs> our background check policy and our employee and volunteers um, has been completed. Any volunteers that we have in the building, um, Mr. Anthony Hoskins is now my volunteer coordinator and uh, community outreach person. Um, any volunteer that we have that wants to volunteer as a part of any of our programming does go through a background check in which he runs for us. Okay. Um, our financial uh, purchasing and internal control policy, um, those things have been completed. We have created a new filing system. Um, I did not think it was a sufficient one in place initially, um, but we've established uh, filing all documentation, receipts, um, facility rentals and purchases. Um, any monies that come in and any monies that go out um, so that we can report that financially. Um, we have uh, completed our board training, um, which was done in last month uh, in the span of two sessions. Ms. Florence Buchanan completed that for us in which we um, partnered with the city and taking care of the uh, balance for that. Um, and so um, up to date, um, what I can say um, as far as the building is concerned and our functioning um, and my staff and how things are flowing in the building, we are operating um, very efficiently. We've experienced tremendous growth um, in the past three months um, of individuals coming in and out of the center. Um, that in lieu of our programming that we do have in place uh, with our mentoring program for both males and females. Um, we also have, um, I'm sorry, we have an after school programming in which we uh, have homework hour um, and we're looking at tutoring with uh, Dr. Kojo in the coming months um, to try to set up because a lot of our students that we have um, that are coming through are not excelling to peak e efficiency right now. And so we're trying to develop some partnerships with the schools um, so that we can try to acknowledge and um, address some of those needs. Um, as far as the um, bylaws updates, um, I don't have a complete update on that. Primarily the board, but I can refer to them for that. Um, the three year projected budget, um, I do know, is not completed. Um, we have not, we've just had our second, uh, I've had my second board meeting as of this past Thursday since I've been here. So we had a board meeting on Thursday and one on in August. And so um, in the time that I've been here, uh, we've been able to continue functioning, functioning me and my staff. Um, and get a lot of things done that we needed to get done as far as communicating with both the city and with our other um, large donor um, United Way. And so I've tried to make sure I kept the lines of communication open on, on that end. What I, one of the things that I can assure you on that is that we are, um, we have already started um, to develop um, a foundation for reaching out for other grants. Um, to get other funding so we're not leaning so much on the city and on United Way for our funding. Um, those, two, um, those two programs that we're uh, looking to uh, reach out for is uh, the 21st Century um, Grant, which is an after school program um, for students that are ex not excelling academically because that's one of our primary needs that we're noticing with the students that are coming through the center. Um, this will address academics and it allows us to develop enrichment programs to give them alternatives in hopes of helping them excel more academically. Um, that particular um, um, 
grant we're going after, and the other is uh, the Summer Youth em Employment Grant, uh, which will allow us to uh, give some jobs to uh, some of the youth in this community during the summer. And so that is my update. Thank you, Felix. I'll see if uh, there's questions or any follow-ups from council members, but also if, uh, if Mr. Pastu has anything further as well as any updates from the administration side. So first I'll uh, see if there's council uh, questions for Felix. Yep. Uh, Councilman Lamore. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Felix, just a quick question on the 21st Century Grant. Uh, so that's basically an after-school program that, that tutors the kids when they come in, or? Well, it'll give us the opportunity to tutor in different subjects, um, and we'll also be able to develop enrichment programs, things like um, as far as um, fine arts programs and things of that nature. Um, it will go into our recreation, um, the whole nine after school, so that it's not just us pushing just academics. We want them to definitely have a balance, and this grant allows us to do that. Are there stipulations you have to follow in order to be awarded the grant or? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. There are definitely stipulations. Right now, we're developing um, our proposal for that grant. Um, but it's always, always based on uh, exactly what you ask for. I do know that the grant runs, I believe, three to five years. Um, yeah, three to five years um, for the grant, um, that particular grant. The other uh, grant runs from two to five years. Um, and so where will we fall in between that if we're awarded the grant? Um, it'll help us, especially with the additional income coming into the city. Thank you. Mm -hmm. other, other questions, or Mr. Pastu, maybe if there's anything, uh, follow up from the administration side with uh, discussions with the uh, ALCC and the board? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, you know, as a follow-up uh, with that, uh, we did uh, have a, a pretty uh, extensive series of tasks uh, to be accomplished. Uh, uh, although, you know, uh, the ALCC board was uh, agreeable with it, uh, um, as Mr. Hill indicated, the bylaws uh, still are in need of uh, amendment, uh, as well as what I consider, and I think everyone else did, looking long-term with the, uh, the three-year projected budget and tying it in with some of the program uh, um, uh, services that, that they would look as far as uh, other sponsors, donors, and, and program uh, uh, partners. Uh, you know, to that extent, I mean, there's still work to be done. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, and, and candidly, I think uh, everyone I had talked with uh, when they went through the uh, board uh, workshop and they all attended, all the uh, ALCC board members uh, found it very helpful. Uh, and yet, from what I'm gathering, there's still some of this little clash and uh, uh, a desire to uh, have the uh, uh, kind of engage, if you will, in some of the getting into the weeds uh, and, and, and one of the things, you know, through our, uh, you know, uh, research with this is obviously the city council does have an appointment uh, based on the uh, bylaws. And, and I do think that, uh, you know, uh, someone in my capacity, uh, uh, because I am desirous to see it succeed, but I would ask city council uh, if they would consider having me uh, appointed as uh, the city's representative to the ALCC board. Uh, and then core along with that, recommending at least another three-month continuation of the appropriation. Maybe not the full amount, but but there's still work to be done. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And and I, you know I think uh, from from my end of it, I'm certainly willing uh, uh, to try and and get uh, the the working relationship, if you will, with the executive director and the board, so that uh, uh, everyone follows up through what was discussed at the, that board work session, what's uh, the role of a board member, what's the board, uh, the responsibilities of the executive director. And, you know, just in, in many ways, hate to say it, but kind of have that board functions much like we do here with, you know, myself as city manager and, and U.S. City Council. And I mean, there's clearly defined roles and there's a, you know, from my end of it, a mutual respect that we have for that. And I think that in some ways that may be missing at this point in time. And so... My suggestion is, uh, and recommendation, continue on for another three months with that, which would be a $35,000 appropriation, and then ask that I uh, be appointed as your uh, representative to the uh, ALCC board. Uh, Councilman Michelangelo. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't, you know, this is the Christmas season, and I don't want to sound like the Grinch, but mm -hmm. uh, I think a couple of things that concerned me was the fact that uh, during your presentation, Mr. Hill, 
you had indicated that there was a five month delay or time frame where the board did not meet. And I would think that one of the functions that the board should be doing in conjunction with the executive director is the preparation of the bylaws. And that's one of the things that we asked to have done and it hasn't been done. And uh, you know, uh, so I'm concerned about that. Uh, the other part of it is, is that if you're going to, and I'm sure you're aware, going after grants, the granting agency is going to ask for a copy of your budget because they're going to want to see that you do have a gap or deficiency in funding. And the, the fact that we don't have the bylaws done or a three-year budget uh, has me also concerned. So uh, I guess I take a little bit stronger approach to this. Um, as we have meant, I've mentioned in the, in the past, people in the community do not differentiate. They think of the ALCC as one agency, and that is the building. They fail to recognize that the Arthur Leslau uh, Community Center and Library are owned by the City of Monroe and their city facilities. And the City of Monroe contracts with the ALCC nonprofit board to run programs out of that building. And if there is a lack of performance, I don't see any reason why the city of Monroe shouldn't consider contracting with the YMCA to run the programs out of that building. But I'm willing to give the city manager, uh, follow his recommendation on putting him on the board uh, to see if, if uh, with Vince's uh, uh, leadership abilities, he can mentor the board into what their effective roles and responsibilities are in order to provide the executive director with the opportunity to focus attention on things like the three-year budget and getting grant funds. Um, but there's got to be a clear differentiation between the board in terms of policy making and the executive director in terms of daily operations and administration of the, uh, of the, uh, the program in the building. Um, because the uh, information that's been provided by the city manager and the fact that the, the city engaged or offered to have Mr. Cochran along with Florence Buchanan help with board training uh, is, a, I guess, an indication on our part that we're willing to make sure that the ALCC nonprofit board succeeds. But when the board doesn't meet for five months, we don't have bylaws and we don't have a three-year budget, I'm a little bit concerned. That's, those are my comments. Other questions uh, from the council? Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I Councilman do, Felder? Uh, regarding uh, <coughs> the city manager's request to be appointed as the, the council liaison, I, I believe that Councilwoman Vining is currently the council liaison, so I'm wondering if the, the, it would be an additional or a replacement position, and then I was just wondering if uh, if Councilwoman Vining, in her absence, do we know if she's amenable to this change? That's a good question. And as we, some of this review and the bylaws, and if we went back and looked at it, and the, the council in the past hasn't appointed a council person to the board, it's as a liaison. The board itself asked the councilwoman to serve on the board. So I think a follow up uh, for Mr. Pastu, and I, I didn't have it. Till we started having the conversation, we realized maybe we should have brought it. That that first uh, or that page that re, uh, speaks to that, I think, would be appropriate to have sent to the council, so you can see it as a foundation. And, and, and Mr. Pastu may have it, or he may remember it um, more so than me. But but I, in, in paraphrase, is that the city makes an appointment to the ALCC board. It doesn't say the council. So that's the difference. The council person. It, it is not appeared on, on the um, uh, appointments of a board and commissions, but it's a, a, as a liaison. So like I said the board themselves, the LCC, had asked her to join the board. Uh, so that's just a clarification. I think that we send, if Vince uh, have that sent out to us, we can read that. But I think uh, making it the city's uh, position, I, I think back um, in past, uh, Mr. Reddy, uh, who was our city attorney had served on that board, and I think it was as a city appointment. So, uh, but that's it, it goes back a little way. So, uh, yeah, Councilman Michael, oh, sorry, it was I mostly just, just for the clarification. Yeah, Thank I you. appreciate that though, because I think we get it and have uh, be able to, to read that as well. Uh, Councilman Michael, yeah, Your Honor, I, I, I would 
we don't have to do it this evening, but maybe something that the city attorney can take a look at. Mm -hmm. When the concern I have is that when when uh, uh, Councilman Vining is the city liaison to the board, just like uh, mm -hmm. Councilman Lamore is the liaison to the Port Authority. But when the bo ALCC board asked Kelly Vining to serve as a board member, now she's a board member of the ALCC and she is on the city council and there is a compatibility issue in my opinion because you can't serve two masters. We're, she's in a, in a position where she's providing money to a nonprofit that she sits on a nonprofit board as a board member to. So we don't have to do it this evening, but it would be nice to get clarification from the city attorney on the compatibility of office issue. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. So I think uh, having sent that out and have the city attorney look at that, I think uh, I'll be able to come back. And, and I think uh, having the city manager, um, obviously comes from the administration on the appointment, I think would give some of the structure and opportunities for growth as well that have already been mentioned. So any questions, Mr. Pascu? No, the only thing I did talk with uh, council member uh, Bining about it and she seemed uh, very yeah. comfortable and almost relieved uh, of my willingness to, to take that on. So I chatted with her last uh, Friday. And so, um, but uh, yeah, I will, uh, in fact, I'm looking at the bylaws here. I'll, We'll set, circulate that where the city does, and it actually still the county has an appoint, uh, appointment as well to that. So another conversation as we move forward. <laughs> it is important. It, it is a very important, and yeah. I think that's an opportunity to have that uh, discussion. And again, with the county administration, because there's a there was a purpose and a reason that the county was there. Because we always talk about the ALCC, and it is a community wide facility for all to use. And, it, and that includes uh, many activities that uh, f uh, for a period of time. And, and so, so now there are non-city residents that come from county reaches that come there for activities, whether, whether it be athletic or other reasons, it doesn't matter. So that's really their, their, um, that's how it's currently read. So we'll have to visit, uh, revisit that with the county, uh, Monroe County as well. So thank you, Vince. Uh, yeah, Council Michael uh, uh, Mr. Hill, and I know there's, there's a board members from ALCC mm -hmm. in the audience. I, you know, I'll, I'll speak for, I don't want to speak for council, but I will because of its <laughs> actions. We want the ALCC to succeed. When we revised the lease agreement, we did so by reorganizing that the first $16,000 of the utilities are paid by the city in addition to the 140. It used to be that you had to pay out of the 140 the utility bills. So we wanted to provide the opportunity for more stable funding because a lot of the programs that you do benefit the kids down in that neighborhood. So we really do want the ALCC to succeed. And I hopefully with, uh, uh, with Vince taking on the responsibility of serving on the board that maybe with his uh, leadership and working with the board, we're able to kind of get everything back on track. I think it's, a, I think it's enough um, to go around as far as individuals being responsible for what's going on down here with the ALCC. No, I, I think you're, and, you're doing and, a good and job. And yeah, and, yeah. And, and I think I've voiced this to uh, uh, some of the city officials. Um, this center has failed this community. For my coming, as you all had some things that were supposed to be done even before my arrival. And what I've tried to do is to try to make up and put out a lot of fires. That's what I've been doing the last three or four months. Um, I think we've made a lot of progress, you know, um, in light of all the things that we've had to deal with. Um, but there has to, this has to be done right. It has to be done right. Some things have to be put in order. And I invite and, 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 and certainly happy uh, that Mr. Vince wants to come on um, to the board because if the head of the snake is not right, then the rest of the body won't be either. So uh, we've done the best that we can, we can't, we could, with what we had. And so um, as far as the budget and the bylaws are concerned, those are definitely items that should have been in place even before I was brought mm -hmm. in. And so, um, and like that they're not done, you know, um, we have extended ourselves to try to help with those things and at times even denied in doing that. And so, um, I think we're moving in the right direction per our training um, and the meeting that we had on last Thursday. Um, but there are some things, as even some of the things that you said, um, as far as conflict of interest even being in the way, 
there are things that have to be done right so that we can get viable professionals in those places um, so we can flesh out exactly what my vision is for this community because no it's not the east side's community <coughs> this is for the city and so there are some things that we're going to be trying to do to involve everybody to be a part of this and so i echo your sentiments um but what i can say is for me and my staff we've done the best with what we have well thank you good start thank you if there's no other questions and mr pass too has his uh, directions i think we're good all right all right thank you felix thank have you a very wonderful much. holiday and christmas yep work next item please Next item is under communications, item 2258, communication regarding 34 West Front Street redevelopment status. Thank you. Um, Mr. Pastu or is Mr. Yeah, Cochran? Yeah, we just, uh, uh, Mr. Cochran's going to come up, uh, do a, a brief uh, presentation. Uh, but, uh, you know, earlier this year, the uh, city council authorized the sale of a small portion of lot uh, there at uh, 34 West Front Street, which is uh, the old UNI bar. Uh, there has been a little bit of a change in, uh, in the floor plan uh, that the uh, uh, owners are looking at and, and, and clearly I will tell you city staff is, is supportive of uh, uh, keeping the, uh, uh, the purchase uh, going forward but we still felt compelled that we needed to let you know there's a little bit of change in the use and, and I think uh, as Mr. Uh, Cochran is firing it up uh, you'll understand uh, but the uh, they're not, no longer going to be using the, the third floor for apartments as they have in the past. And so um, I'll let Mark uh, carry it from here now that it's uh, ready to roll. So Thank you. Mayor, Council, Mark Cochran again. Um, so as uh, Mr. Pastu mentioned, we've been in conversations with uh, the, uh, the partners who are going to be redeveloping the former UNI bar. Um, again, they're not going to have the residential apartments on the, the second floor of the property as they've kind of refined what their development is going to end up being. Um, it's still the restaurant and uh, dining and bar establishment that they're planning for. Um, but with that said, originally when we presented to council the, the idea about uh, selling the adjoining property, the vacant city property to the developer that was for the purpose of moving the interior stairwell onto the outside of the, stair the, the building to maximize the first floor space um, to allow access to the residential apartments upstairs. Um, they still would like to own the property, and, and as Mr. Pastu mentioned, for very good reasons. Um, if you know the building, it is very small. Um, if you look on in the first floor of the, the property, having the interior stairwell, having a bar there, um, would not allow for much space for patrons who are waiting for tables or waiting for seats unless they're um, outside or crammed into the building. So um, this is a rough rendering of what the, the new development is going to look like. You can see the vacant city property um, on the east side of the, the, the building. Um, they are proposing to build uh, a, a year-round patio that would be enclosed but also open during the summertime. There's benefit to having this sort of cafe seating um, in an area on the side of the building as opposed to the front with having the city, the sidewalk out front and, and blocking that with uh, cafe and tables and fencing and, and such. So um, the concept that's on the side of the building would also continue uh, on the back of the building for a, for a year round uh, patio overlooking the river for outdoor seating. Um, but be able to enclose it in somewhere to what Nick and Nino's does during the winter time and provide heat and tables. So um, also having the green space on the side would, would benefit the building as well. But as you can tell, this is a good quality redevelopment. Um, these are experienced and capitalized developers, so we have faith that uh, they will implement the plan. It's a great project for downtown. It's not that much space that we would be selling to them either. Um, I do have permission. There is other renderings of the interior that I can show. Um, I can't distribute these, but um, for the purposes of demonstration, this is what the first floor is going to look like. So approximately five or six tables uh, of seating area on the inside, as well as the bar and the, the stairwells going down into the basement and also up to the second floor uh, for more customer space. But again, very limited space in the front of the building for uh, the host station and customer waiting. Um, this is the basement and the lower level chef's table, larger uh, table for meetings and larger groups, as well as um, the, the brewery and distillery that they were proposing may not be done on site, but they're still looking at opportunities, uh, other opportunities downstairs. 
again, a walkout patio onto the back of the building. And then the second floor, the upper floor, um, more tables and seating area with a patio off the back of the, the building that would only be used in the summertime in the nicer weather, not year round. So that is the, the refined proposal. We thought it was appropriate and doing our due diligence to bring that to council because the use is different than what was originally stated, so. We'll start, comments? Go ahead, Mr. Pastu. Uh, we're not asking, uh, you know, specifically for city council action. We, you know, you've taken action previously, but we did, as Mr. Cochran indicated, thought you needed to know that there is a little bit of change in the plan. So, um. just want to follow up. To, I think it uh, really looks nice. I think it's uh, a great project, as uh, Mark had said. But also, um, while it's uh, a large investment. Uh, the the DDA did uh, uh, support, of course, council's uh, support for the uh, budget amendment that uh, this and another location receiving a facade grant. So uh, participation there as well to help uh, modify the front of the building. Your Honor, council, my, Michael, the, the comment is, you know, this is a great example of a, of a redevelopment. And I know that at the last council meeting, the chairman of the DDA came to express his... Uh, his, his not his comments why he voted no and I you know that's that's their decision making process but what I what I what I think is intriguing about the DDA's facade program is I I would prefer myself as a council person and as a resident rather than sprinkle the money around to 10 buildings to see a little bit done I would rather have them on an annual basis give one or two buildings a significant infusion of money to get projects like this done. And then over 10 years, we have 10 buildings completed in the downtown, completely completed, instead of one that has maybe windows in it, one that has a new awning, but actual completed, totally completed facades on buildings. It just makes the downtown look a lot better. So I didn't, you know, I, I appreciate where he was coming from as chairman and what his, his rationale for it was, but these type of projects are pretty, uh, these leverage a lot more investment in the downtown area. Yeah, with having a lot of the older buildings downtown, it's more than just facade work that needs done on a lot of these buildings, and that greatly assists developers who are coming in and, and doing these transformative projects on some of the historic and older downtown buildings, too. You know, because a project like this, if it's a quarter of a million dollars, let's say, or even more, mm -hmm. uh, then it, this project alone is, is going to be a distillery. But it also, because of the investment, leverages the ability for the downtown to get more DDA state liquor licenses, redevelopment liquor licenses, which then provides an opportunity for another restaurant to come into the downtown, you know, and bring more people. So, yeah, this is a great project. Very well. Thanks for the report. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for the update. Clerk, next item, please. The next item is under council action, item 2263, a proposed ordinance to amend Chapter 22, Boards, Commissions, Authorities, and Committees, Article 5, Citizens Planning Commission Composition. Move to introduce an ordinance to amend Chapter 22 and um, to schedule a public hearing and final reading for Monday, January 7, 2019. Michelle, excuse me. What's the date again for the proposed public hearing? Uh, January 7th. January 7th. Our first 7th. meeting. Yeah. Your Honor, I'll make a motion that we schedule a public hearing for January 7th for the ordinance to amend Chapter 22 Boards, Commissions, Authorities, and Committees, Article 5 Planning Commission. Support. Uh, there's a motion by Councilman Michelangeli, supported by uh, Councilwoman Germani. On item 2263, uh, um, to schedule the public hearing final reading on January 7th, 2019. Uh, and it wasn't said, but it, to put it on the floor tonight for its first reading. Reading. So, um, is there, I'll, for the first reading, is there comments uh, this evening? Councilman yeah, Moore? Regarding the, uh, uh, the new established, or what they're attempting to do to amend this ordinance, 
Um, the CPC currently consists of uh, two members from the first precinct and two members from the fifth precinct. If we go down to seven members and having one member from each precinct, you'll have to eliminate one of those members. And if you need four people for a quorum in a seven person CPC, uh, it's safe to say that uh, you may end up not getting a quorum in many of these meetings if the ordinance is passed as written. Um, I can tell you that the four members that I have just mentioned are pretty uh, solid members. They attend pretty much on a 99% basis. Uh, so you eliminate one of them and I think you may end up having some issues getting a quorum in the CPC. That was the only comment I had to make. Very good. So we're uh, first reading is this evening and then we'll have the public hearing uh, come up. Clerk. Councilperson Felder. Yes. Whitman. Yes. Ed Weinberg. Yes. Vining. Excuse. Oh, sorry, that's right. Mm -hmm. Germany. Yes. Lamore. No. Mayor Clark. Yes. Chapter 22, Boards, Commissions, Authorities, and Committees, Article 5, Planning Commission. An ordinance to amend Chapter 22, Boards, Commissions, Authorities, and Committees, Article 5, Planning Commission of the Code of the City of Monroe. Thank you. Next item, please. The next item is item 2257, proposed ordinance to establish the River Raisin Heritage Corridor Advisory Commission. Move to introduce and place on floor for a first reading an ordinance to amend Chapter 22, Boards, Commissions, Authorities, and Committees of the City Code to add Article 11 by establishing the River Raisin Heritage Corridor Advisory Commission and schedule a public hearing and final reading for Monday, January 7, 2019. Your Honor, I'll make a motion that we schedule a that we place on the floor for its first reading, ordinance number 19002 to amend chapter 22 boards, commissions, authorities, and committees to add article 11, the River Raisin Heritage Corridor Advisory Commission and schedule January 7, 2019 as the public hearing. Support. There's a motion by Council Michael Lange, supported by uh, Councilman Felder on item 2257, first reading and public hearing on a date stated. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilperson Felder? Yes. Whitman? Yes. Ikoangeli? Yes. Germany? Yes. Lamore? Yes. Mayor Clark? Yes. Chapter 22, Boards, Commissions, Authorities, and Committees article. An ordinance to amend Chapter 22, Boards, Commissions, Authorities, and Committees to add Article 11, River Raisin Heritage Quarter Advisory Commission of the Code of the City of Monroe. Thank you. Next item, please. The next item is item 2254, authorization of River Raisin National Battlefield Park Foundation sublease agreement. Um, I'll make a motion that we recommend the city count, or we recommend that we approve the sublease agreement between the Monroe County R Convention and Tourism Bureau for office space at the River Raisin National Battlefield Park Education Center. Second. Motion by Councilman Michelangelo, supported by Councilman Lamore. Item 2254 regarding the um, authorization for the sublease agreement. Um, Mr. Pastu, any comments or I think it's no, pretty I think, well uh, in the fact sheet. No, I think the uh, fact sheet that uh, you received indicated that uh, we do have a sublease uh, with, the, um, um, with the Battlefield Foundation and there's a condition I think in Article 12 that uh, specifies if they do a sublease it does require uh, consent of the City uh, Council and that's why this item is before you. Thank you. I think it's a great move, Your Honor. Yeah, yeah I think uh, looking to the Council any comments but you know that's we think back as we made this transformation and started and council's support and council's direction here is how do we make the, uh, uh, the education uh, center there more viable and this is another partnership that I think that is very important to, to partner with the uh, National Park Foundation Board and others. With that, clerk, please call the roll. Councilperson Felder? Yes. Whitman? Yes. Michelangelo? Yes. Germany? Yes. Lamore? Yes. Mayor Clark? Yes. Next item, please. The next item is item 2261, fire station change order approval. Mr. Pestu. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this item here to, is for council to consider a change order to the fire station uh, 
project, uh, changing uh, the, the doors specified, the overhead retractable doors, uh, going on to 3rd Street uh, to uh, what would be uh, fourfold doors. Uh, uh, the cost of the change order is uh, 91000 uh, During our planning process, in order to try and keep the uh, budget uh, at a $6 million target, this item was considered, uh, we used as a bid alternate, and then we even held off uh, from the administrative standpoint uh, presenting this to make sure the project that got out of the ground uh, uh, pretty good without uh, any other uh, contingent need for uh, hitting the contingency line item. And, and as a result of that, uh, off to a favorable start with the project uh, and a couple of savings, if you will, from some of the uh, allowances that we had. And then add to the, the fact that uh, with the financing, we got uh, fi favorable conditions with that. Uh, it's presented to City Council that uh, without uh, a great deal of concern regarding the budgetary impact, it would come out of the project contingency amount. Uh, but, you know, there is uh, some positives and, and also some, uh, you know, negatives associated. The positives being is that there's a modest time difference in the opening uh, uh, of uh, the fourfold doors as opposed to the overhead retractable. Uh, the overhead retractables uh, are more likely to be hit uh, uh, with a fire uh, uh, apparatus hitting it uh, at exit, uh, not a large occurrence, but it does happen. Uh, and but they are also more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, the reasons for not is obviously the additional cost for installation, but also in the event of uh, uh, someone hitting it, uh, the repair will likely be uh, more expensive. So uh, we don't have this on the second street side. Uh, those will still be overhead, and part of the rationale is that. Uh, uh, the urgency for the uh, fire truck to return into the building is not uh, the same as it leaving, uh, but also it's on the backside of the building. And so we did meet with our fire steering committee today. The recommendation was to, to proceed with uh, approval of uh, this change order for the city council. I will note, and maybe with, with the concurrence of uh, the city attorney, that uh, this is a budget amendment that would view it as such and, and would require five affirmative votes of uh, the city council. I guess we put it on the floor for discussion, see if there's comments to be made by council. My, my question yeah. is how did the, uh, the, how did the discussion at the fire committee uh, come out today? It has been, uh, I think, uh, similar to what we've had in, in the past. I mean, it's a discussion about uh, some of the challenges if somebody does hit it, uh, you know, the expense related to that. Uh, uh, you know, how much is gained uh, actually time-wise from uh, the difference uh, of uh, the overhead versus the fourfold door, um, whether that makes a difference uh, as well. And, and certainly a recognition that this isn't kind of an off-the-shelf type of uh, product that uh, any uh, garage door uh, company can, can handle. But it does uh, offer some uh, more aesthetic uh, pleasing uh, aspect to it. It does have the <coughs> modest uh, time opening uh, with that uh, um, with that uh, as well, so. Uh. I make, I make, uh, it's not on the floor yet, but I'll just make some comments because I serve on, on the committee and it's been a long process to get to where we are. And it's really great to see the building that's, uh, it is going up. A um, couple of discussions that were uh, today, and as I went through the fact sheet, I, I don't think the, uh, uh, the first two are, are significant. I don't think that they make that um, much of a, uh, I'll just say, reason, but and I think as you get down to it, it is aesthetics. But on the other hand, uh, one of the questions they asked the, today at the meeting, and I think it was, and I didn't write them down, but maybe Mr. Pastu can help me. Uh, there were I, other, my concern was, were the other items that we talked about through the process, did they get vetted and in, in, uh, where do they stand? And I think there was four items that were um, discussed I, as I thought about it uh, during and, and then after that actually did get completed. One was, I know, the parking lot out front, which was about the ability for the public to access the facility. So that was completed. I believe also the entrance uh, into the back. And, and there was two others, Vince, if you can help me out, if not. Uh, well, those were the two primary ones right. uh, that we had were the, um, you know, the parking lot, uh, the public parking lot coming off of 3rd Street and mm -hmm. then the, uh, the uh, entry apron uh, coming off of 2nd uh, being uh, concrete. Right. Uh, you know, we'd looked at a number of smaller items here and there through the projects, uh, but but those were the three bid alternates that we had. Mm -hmm. This one we uh, held off on given the dollar amount, uh, and I think in a prioritization, probably the last one to, to kind of consider. 
So I went back and looked because I could. I was looking for the, the notes from that if there was any other significant items that were not included, and I did not find that because I think it was taken care of. We, we talked through the meeting about some other adjustments that were done to the building, uh, uh, just maybe a room configuration, uh, use of a room. So I think that's kind of where we got to today, and that's why this is there. Of course, the money comes out of contingency. That was discussed at the meeting as well, and the city manager, administration, uh, uh, Mr. Lewis, consultant, feels that it's not going to be a burden to the contingency. You never know what comes up. We recognize that. Uh, and the, uh, if I can just say the, um, the consultant that's working with us on this is, uh, recognizes that, you know, you clearly want to finish the project under the amount that's, uh, that's allotted for that. And if there's money that's left over, it gets to be reverted back and there's opportunities for that use in relation to the, not just the, uh, the, uh, the, the fire station, but also, uh, equipment and other things. So I, well, I think it's close on the uh, contingency. I think that uh, discussion further and then afterwards, I feel that uh, we can get there. Um, there's no question it'll be better than what it was before, uh, and I, uh, uh, as far as aesthetically. So, Your Honor, uh, yes, I, my comments. I wasn't able to attend the meeting, but I uh, sent a memo in. But one of the things I looked at when I did some research on it. Uh, as the city manager mentioned, there's a, no, a not a noticeable, but there is a difference in the amount of time that it they they, they open faster, they close faster. Some of the reviews that I found on the internet indicated that some of the fire departments looked at that as it's also a heating and cooling savings mm -hmm. when you depending on the time. But the really thing that I looked at it was that two thirds of the facade of the building are really garage doors. And when you take a look at ninety-one thousand dollars over six million dollar budget, that's one that's one and a half percent. So for one and a half percent, we really can kind of do a really nice job at making the front of the building look a lot better than just having roll-up garage doors. So to me, that was I kind of agree with the mayor. It's it, it's it's an, mainly an aesthetic issue, but when you're taking a look at the length the uh, the, the amount of width of the four doors that we have on the garage, it takes up two thirds of the facade for 1.5%. I think it's worth it in the long run to really, really polish off and give the building a finished look. I guess I'll follow up I, I, during the committee meeting and as the committee was um, weighing in, I, I, I wasn't there yet with the, at the discussion when I closed. I did take time as I went back before uh, tonight's meeting because uh, the Chief White did uh, provide at least a, uh, a photograph of what of a facility has one. Give me an opportunity to, to kind of look at some others as well. There's no question it'll be more appealing. It's not about spending money just to make things look nicer. It's really, it has to have some functionality as well. But I think the count, uh, Council Michelangelo's uh, final comment there about what the facade of the front of the building looks like when it's going to be completed. Uh, an entrance way is, is critically important for the public that, that arrives, that not only that's welcoming, but that has uh, accessibility. Uh, the, the doors, I think, will add to that. I think it's also an opportunity when we talk about our community activities and the, the, the mm -hmm. room that's set there uh, to hold those activities. This will, I think, uh, accommodate that uh, better as well. Uh, I think it's something that the, the community will kind of visit and have the opportunity. Councilman Lamore. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, my, my major concern, obviously, would be if the door had to be repaired, what kind of additional cost over uh, regular doors are we talking about? I mean, considerable? That is uh, that's it's about as uh, uh, much as I could tell you is considerable based on an experience our uh, construction manager had. But there's a couple things, too, I, I think, from... Uh, uh, standpoint that, that that you take into consideration based on the design. Um, this is a complete drive-through uh, from 2nd Street to 1st, and so uh, there's certainly plenty of area for that. And these retractable doors, these bifold doors will retract behind the, uh, the brick of uh, the building. The other thing, very important, and, and Chief White brought this up uh, in our discussion, is that they, the, do the doors currently are 12 foot in width. These are 14 foot, and so the opportunity to hit the side of it I think is significantly diminished by having that wider 
uh, door opening as well. And then lastly is that you do have a pretty lengthy apron uh, from uh, the fire station when you exit it onto 3rd Street so that if you're cranking uh, you know, the fire truck uh, too quick that you're not going to necessarily hit it. You've got a ways to get out there and into traffic. And you've seen some fire stations in the past where you've got, you're right on top of the road. And, and I think that maybe is uh, where the problem is. So, you know, we had the discussion on it. I feel comfortable that, yes, there's that probability. And if it does get hit, I'm not sure why they're driving uh, because, uh, you know, you've got a much wider bay uh, entrance into it and, and, you know, a drive through and a fairly lengthy apron before you hit the third street. So I'll see if there's any other comments. Oh, uh, Councilman Jermaine. Is there a difference between the time if they get a call between the two different doors? Is one faster than the other? Well, there is, I think, uh, a little uh, from start to finish once it's activated that these uh, fourfold doors are quicker, but substantially probably not, and certainly not uh, one that's going to necessarily have a big uh, effect on response time. We're talking a couple seconds. Yeah, it's just a you know, two, three seconds. So it's not significant. I mean, we we know that as we as we place the fire station, and there's areas in our in our jurisdiction that that, that time changes. So I, I don't think it's. And that's why I said the first couple to me weren't um, weren't items that that really persuade me uh, in support because the time difference is negligible. Every second we know counts. But on the other hand, were we located in a, a different location before? Uh, the likely to, to, to hit the, it exists for both. And then it comes to the cost, as you said, and there's other maintenance items with the existing uh, roll-up doors that might be different through an annual basis versus a replacement basis. So I kind of put that aside, and like I said, I got down to the aesthetics, but I think there's more to it, and there's other, it's really about are we expending the, the, the bond funds appropriately, and did we take care of other items that were discussed in the committee over the past months that had uh, importance and it was there any that were left on the table so to speak that uh, should be considered now if we're if it's it, but there wasn't I think we've addressed those and uh, speaking with Mr. Pass too as well uh, afterwards I think it has been so I think we're ready to go your honor I'll make a motion that we amend the uh, fire department budget construction budget to add the ninety one thousand dollars for the uh, four uh, bifold doors support uh, motion by Council Mike Lynch, supported by uh, Councilman Felder, um, to on item 2261, the change order approval. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilperson Felder? Yes. Whitman? Yes. Michelangeli? Yes. Germaney? Yes. One more? Yes. Mayor Clark? Yes. Clerk, next item, please. The next item is item 2259, Geographic Information System Consultant Services Agreement Extension. Mr. Pastu, <laughs> you see a couple smiling faces, but I think it's a good thing. So we'll, uh, once I here we are. My, once I regain my composure, I'll go through this. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, no, we're asking, uh, city administration's asking for another three-year extension with uh, Ritter uh, service uh, for our GIS service with that. In part, this is here as a reminder uh, to provide uh, City Council with an update where we are in the uh, process of, uh, of trying to hire a business and data coordinator uh, and that would lead subsequently to a GIS tech. Uh, as I indicated in the uh, report that uh, we've actually uh, tried two efforts and this past week we actually uh, did some interviews and uh, and again, we're walking away a second time without uh, uh, success. And so we uh, are going to circle around, reevaluate, and, and, and take a look at the position that we're asking for, uh, maybe revise a, a few things here and there. But uh, um, it's not for a lack of effort that uh, we didn't uh, get this. Uh, we actually worked with uh, uh, Plant Moran a little bit to help us in, in you know, doing the selection uh, recruiting uh, for the candidates for this position, so. Council comments. Hey, Your Honor, I have some comments. Uh, one is, do we have a strategic plan? Didn't we approve mm -hmm. a contract with Plant Moran to do a, we st did. a strategic uh, technology information master, or strategic plan? Yeah. Has that been done? Oh, that's been completed. Okay. Did, and, uh, I don't, I, I'm not aware that the council ever, had a presentation on it? Um, you don't think so either? No. Can we, that, that'd be a good uh, Can we get one item. of those on a workshop? Sure. 
too. Uh, and the other, the other question I have is, uh, uh, I don't want to get, I don't want the city stuck without having GIS capability. We don't have anybody on staff, so yeah, you have a, you know, another three month extension. But I still can't uh, kind of wrap my arms around the fact that why aren't we advertising? I know you want to have a coordinator. But why aren't we just advertising also for a GIS technician who eventually will report to the coordinator uh, in order to get a GIS technician on board and starting to work at the city? I don't know why we need one without the other. Why can't we just go both and then if one we happen to get a GIS technician, eventually he's going to have a supervisor? Well, I think the, uh, the idea was uh, obviously to have... Uh you know, the uh, coordinator in place and have them play uh, an important role in the selection process for the GIS coordinator. Make sure there's obviously uh, similar uh, comfort level, compatibility, that type of thing. Uh, but as I said, we're going to reevaluate uh, where we're at with it. And so yeah. um, we probably need to do take a maybe a little different approach. So, other comments? Motion made order. Your Honor, I'll make a motion that we extend the contract with uh, Ritter GIS in an amount not to exceed $23,520 uh, for a three-month uh, contract extension. Motion by Councilman Aquinasley, supported by Councilwoman Whitman on 2259, the GIS uh, Council Service Agreement Extension. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilperson Felder? Yes. Whitman? Yes. Michael Angeli? Yes. Germaney? Yes. Lamore? Yes. Mayor Clark? Yes. Next item, please. The next item is item 2265, consideration to approve form for DTE tax tribunal defense intergovernmental agreement. Mr. Pastu. We're asking uh, council to approve uh, in a general sense uh, the uh, tax tribunal uh, intergovernmental uh, agreement. Uh, I think there's going to be some changes here and there tinkering with uh, through the approval of uh, the city attorney, but this is a follow-up to the uh, December 4th meeting that we had with uh, the community and, and many of the uh, taxing entities regarding their participation in the uh, DTE uh, uh, tax appeal uh, defense. Uh, uh, based on that, uh, you, there's a listing of all the entities that would be uh, a part and involved with that. Uh, we're looking at uh, a $1 million three-year defense uh, potential with that. And then the allocation is that the city would incur the first 50000 each year based on the remaining balance we uh, estimate from the 1% tax administration uh, levy that uh, takes place uh, to cover the cost of the assessor and a portion of the treasurer's office really dedicated to tax collection. And then we're basing that on, uh, I think I put the attachment in there, what that would look like. Uh, I think we end up, uh, uh, we had two scenarios, one with the participation of uh, uh, the state of Michigan and one without, I'm probably leaning to the fact that it won't happen, but uh, um, but uh, you can see what that allocation uh, would look like. Uh, we would probably be, as a city, putting in over 50% of that uh, defense. So, But uh, we were asking for your consent to, to get this rolling. Uh, if it's approved, I'll be sending out uh, some letters to the taxing entities at the end of the month uh, to initiate the process. Questions for uh, administration? The only, the only comment that I have, Your Honor, I, uh, yep. uh, at the joint information session that was held a couple weeks ago, I think the one positive thing that has come out of the DTE uh, tax tribunal is that we've got all the different taxing jurisdictions in the same room collaborating. So this could be kind of a almost a, a, a prelude of things to come with other issues that we all face as tax and jurisdictions, it was kind of nice to see everybody in the same room, all on the same page, all in the same canoe, rowing in the same direction. So, uh, uh, Your Honor, I'll make a motion that we approve the Tax Tribunal Appeal and Cost Sharing Agreement. Second. Motion by Councilman Eckelines, supported by uh, Councilman Lamore. Uh, on item 2265, the uh, DTE Tax Tribunal Defense Intergovernment Agreement. Final comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilperson Felder? Yes. Whitman? Yes. Michael Angeli? Yes. Germaney? Yes. Lomore? Yes. Mayor Clark? Yes. Next item, please. Next item is the consent agenda, and under item B, approval of payments to vendors, the amount should read $1,718,314.69. Is 
1718314.69. Thank you. Are there any items on the consent agenda that council wishes to have pulled for further discussion? Any items on the consent agenda? Seeing none. Any items on the consent agenda? Those present here this evening wish to have pulled for further discussion. Any items from those present wish to be pulled? Motion is in order. Your Honor, I motion that all items on the consent agenda be accepted, placed on file, and the recommendations be carried out and resolutions adopted. Second. Motion by Council Felder, supported by Council Lamore, that all items on the consent agenda be accepted, <laughs> placed on file, recommendations carried out, and resolutions adopted. Clerk, please call the roll. Felder? Yes. Whitman? Yes. 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 Lamore? Yes. Mayor Clark? Yes. Next item, please. I have no other items, Your Honor. It's, uh, it's December. Councilman Felder. Well, I would just like to thank Ed Sell and the finance team for putting that financial report together. That was a beast to get through, and I'm sure it was a beast to put together, too. Um, I've been involved in those, and I know how much work is, is there. So thank you for that. Um, lots of development happening downtown. The buildings are really starting to look wonderful. If you haven't gotten a chance to go downtown this holiday season, please, uh, please take the time. Uh, to go see some of the new buildings. Um, I hope that uh, the, the new structures being put up just in the last two years or the renovations that have been done to make our downtown look so great um, have uh, given some of the property owners that have, that have been there a while but maybe haven't taken the initiative to, uh, to, to promote their own businesses or renovate their own businesses. I hope it, it gives them some fire and motivation to, to do that and to catch up. I, I think that uh, we're on track to, to really be having not really nice, great downtown. Um, the Pancakes with Santa event was wonderful. I hope everyone is able to get to that, as, as was the Christmas, uh, Christmas Magic Parade. And thank you for the entities that helped put that on. Um, I think we had 8,000 people there or something. That was, that was just a tremendous event, albeit a little bit cold. But thank you to everyone who braved the weather. That was a really nice event. And of course, a very Merry Christmas to everyone. I hope that you are able to spend some time with your families this holiday season, uh, take some stress off, kick up, and relax a little bit. We all need it. So you guys take care. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilwoman Whitman. All I can say is, you know, because <laughs> of our area. You know, I am really proud of the way that uh, people are starting to turn out for all the functions. Santa Claus breakfast was wonderful. Everyone has a very merry Christmas, a safe Christmas. Councilman Michelangelo. Just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Okay. Councilwoman Germini. Yeah, so if you didn't think it was Christmas, you just had to walk downtown this last weekend. It was, it was awesome. It really was. Um, yes, also a very Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, because we won't be here till after the New Year. And there is a media personality that is having a birthday this Wednesday, Michelle Power. So uh -huh. I want to wish her a happy uh -huh. birthday. Very good. Councilman Lamore. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, downtown Christmas Parade this past Saturday was a huge success again this year. Uh, I want to thank our police department for a job well done. I don't think there was one incident, and there were many people downtown Saturday night. Uh, great job with crowd control and making sure everyone was safe. Uh, thank you for your presence. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy New Year to the citizens of Monroe. I hope that everyone has a wonderful holiday week. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, we've heard it, but I'll say it again. You know, the uh, Christmas Magic of Monroe was uh, a great event downtown. Uh, first one, uh, Monroe News and for uh, uh, pulling that together, but also the, all the participation of all those that participated, the families that were downtown with their children, the volunteers, it was a great evening. You know, the, the public safety activities over the month, of course, at the uh, Christmas Magic Police, fire, uh, staff that helped out, but all that were not just in the parade, but also making things safe in many aspects. And I'm gonna thank both of uh, those departments. You know, then you have the, as was mentioned, the breakfast, uh, with Santa, the Thanksgiving Day, uh, thinking back here at this time of our year, uh, Monroe Police Department with a shop with a cop, 
and the opportunity to, to, to really uh, share some joy through both of the departments, through our community and, and families and children in need. But I don't want to forget the staff here in, in City Hall as well, because I know that, uh, she won't likely say this, but Pat Weaver, who coordinates the activities here in City Hall, and she does a wonderful job and does it very quietly, and the, and the, the personnel within the, the, the building and the other buildings that participate in the casual day and the fund that's uh, collected from that uh, goes to help uh, adopt a family at this time. And just kind of watching her at the end of the day here, wrapping up some presents. It was really nice to see. So my thanks to all uh, the departments and all the personnel and the staff for their kindness and giving through this uh, holiday season. We give holidays and Christmas wishes to all as well. And uh, uh, everybody be safe, and we'll see you at the new year. Yes. Okay. Um, I too want to wish everyone a happy Christmas and a wonderful new year. And just to echo what the mayor said, um, it's always amazing to me how this community and the wider county pulls together. I'm involved with a lot of nonprofits, um, but beyond that, I'm just a resident. And I see random acts of kindness every day, and they're really ramped up at this time of the year, especially um, no one seems to be forgotten. Um, and and those that that maybe are are struggling, there are just so many people that that while they're busy giving to their family and giving to themselves, because we some of us buy a gift for ourselves when we buy a gift for somebody else, um, they still remember everybody else. So it's really it's really great. It's great to to see that, and um, it always makes me proud to live in this in this community and again in the wider county. So thanks for letting me be a part of it. Um, and thank you for um, all the well wishes that you've given to our staff at City Hall. Uh, we enjoy serving each and every day. We come in here, and, and sometimes it's sometimes it's hard, um, but for the most part, we we are happy to be able to be here and try to work through our problems as well as we can. Um, and then, speaking of problems, I appreciate everyone's patience while we work through the microphones and you know various things like that. Um, this is going to be a great system once we finish all the tweaking. So if you just bear with us, probably another meeting or two, you may see a person running out, um, turning a mic on, but, um, but we're going to try to work through all of those. So thank you. Before I ask uh, city manager for comments, you know, I think of uh, our, our council meetings and this year and years past, we get uh, um, great opportunities to uh, not only show our impact, but also our other partners. One got a birthday wish today. And I want to thank Danielle Porteous for all her service to our community and reporting uh, some really um, difficult topics and topics that consume a lot of time. So, Danielle, thank you for your service here. Thank you for your great articles and, I, and uh, your continuation as you move forward. Thanks much. Thank you. Mr. Pestu. Them. Very well done by everybody that helped uh, participate. The only other thing I have is uh, the legislative update. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, the uh, legislative update, uh, we did, uh, Mr. Cochran uh, provided the city council with an update uh, of a lot of activities related to the uh, uh, lame duck session taking place in Lansing, and I didn't know if there was anything in particular you wanted to discuss or talk a little bit further. Um, certainly open to, to any questions you might have. Thank you. I don't know if there's uh, any questions or updates from Mr. Cochran for council. Um, I, I'm just make a follow-up comment. That I really appreciate the time and effort that uh, uh, Mark puts into these and. It's not just where he's taking off and clipping it from somewhere else and putting it in there. He's really looking at how it, you know, some of that have a direct impact. And there's many, many bills that are in lame duck session, but these uh, are mo probably most directly related. I also want to re refer um, the council, because I know you, I believe you all received the SEMCOG website uh, announcement. This uh, past one just came in today. It's also to see 
um, the legislative update that they put forward and what the SEMCOG's position is as well as a, a regional uh, governance for the, uh, the seven counties and, and the municipalities and townships and counties. And, uh, and it's not just SEMCOG staff putting it out there. Those are discussions by the, uh, by the, uh, the governing agencies and, and discussions. So it, it kind of matches as another uh, view of, of our participation with, uh, with SEMCOG and a role there that, uh, where that comes from a larger regional uh, position as well. So I want to say thanks, Mark. I appreciate uh, all the information on that. So. Okay. Need my notes there. Pardon me. <laughs> so, as the city manager, all of the comments, right? Okay, sorry. So, it's an opportunity for those that are present this evening if they have any comments. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, to the podium, please. Name and address. Yeah. Good evening, Your Honor, honored members of council, and all those present. Jeannie Mika. I wanted to thank everyone that had anything to do with that lights parade. It was fun. I know the Sawyer Homestead, that a couple of our people put a float together. We had a good time, saw lots of people we knew. I want to thank some of you for having come to the Sawyer House. We were very grateful for that. We had so many people, they were coming out our ears, and even some of the four-legged participants showed up. <laughs> we got a kick out of that. Uh, just a suggestion, I don't know if it falls in the city's purview or what, but it might be nice to put a light on the President Monroe statue, because when we were there at that parade, you could see it was pretty dark, and it was funny. I watched a couple people walk right into it. It's kind of big to miss, but it was just an observation, and it was really nice to see the city, the newspaper, and the chamber were together, put this together. I don't know who you think, I guess the guy in the sky for the wonderful weather, but it was a great event. It was good last year and better this year. And the policemen were just great out there. They were smiling, and when you said thank you, they said, you're welcome. It was kind of nice. Thank you all. Happy New Year. M Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Other, <laughs> Other comments from those present here this evening? Seeing nothing further, motion please. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Councilman Lamore, supported by Councilman Germani to adjourn. Clerk, please call the roll. Person Felder? Yes. Whitman? Yes. Mike Yes. Mr. Amy? Yes. Lamore? Yes. Mayor Clark? Yes.